All right, welcome back. Good morning, guys. Uh, here for another video. And as you probably saw in the clip before this, uh, we got the no Nomad stored for now uh, while we're getting some stuff shuffled and getting some other work done. So I'm probably going to go ahead and show you this project that I'll be working on for the next, oh, probably a month. Uh, getting this thing all dialed in, getting a bunch of cool parts put on it. So I figured everyone, everyone loves a first-gen Camaro. So here we go. It's a 67. I don't know if it's a real RS four-speed car. Uh, I'm not a big Camaro buff, um, so I'm not really sure if this car is, like I said, a real RS, real four-speed. I don't know, but it does have all the, it has the hideaway headlights and whatnot. But anyway, we're doing like a uh, resto mod style build, something he can drive, enjoy, and kind of look the part, be the part. Uh, paint wise it's a nice car a good driver quality paint job uh you know can't complain just a really nice car uh we are going to build up a we were going to do a five or a six speed but he never really takes it outside of town so we are just going to basically do a muncie four speed in this it's got a saginaw right now and if you know those all too well one clutch dump and that thing will probably uh shatter into a thousand pieces so we're going to build up a nice Muncie four speed for this and I'll go over the rest of what we're doing later on. So yeah, I just want to kind of show this thing out in the sun and what it looks like. So we'll go ahead and get started on this thing, getting the shop all cleaned up so we can get it in there and get moving. Front end fell off on this thing, so Jason's gonna take it out, see what he thinks. So we we'll probably need to go through and rebuild some of the steering and suspension and stuff on the front end. You got semi coming this way. Okay, we got her in the shop. So I'm gonna get this thing set up on the lift, kind of get some things inspected, or at least get the lift arms underneath it where it's prepped and ready to go in the air. And then after lunch, we'll probably be ready to start digging into this thing and uh, get moving on it. Okay, got her on the lift and kind of show you the engine bay. Um, it's actually pretty clean so um, it you know should make my end of the deal a lot easier so we'll go ahead and check this thing out so nothing too crazy going on in here just a good you know good cleanup should be nice and then uh, we'll paint that engine up real good and do uh, do what I do on that end 
because we're going to do like a cam, uh, springs, retainers, uh, timing chain, maintenance stuff, head gaskets and whatnot, and get her all looking good. A uh, nice set of headers. So we just got headers on it, but we might go a different route, but we will see. Uh, anyway, yeah, pretty simple, little small block, four speed, but we're gonna make it better and look way better. So now that I've kind of, kind of just assessing where I'm at and then about lunchtime here, so we're gonna eat. And then after lunch, we're gonna tear into this thing. I'd probably like to get it up in the air, get the drive shaft out of it, uh, get the start getting the engine and trans pulled out. And then, yeah, that'd be a really great start. And I'll probably get me a list going of everything we need to do slash check over on this car. So that way you don't forget anything. Uh, just always good to do, make you a list. That way you know, at least for me anyway, it helps out. So anyway, I'm gonna check this thing over a little bit. We'll get back with you guys when I start tearing things apart. Okay, that's about as far as I'm gonna to get today. I uh, just went ahead and used the remainder of the day to basically uh, kind of get this thing to the point where I've got a couple little things left to do. So I'm ready for the morning to pull the transmission and get this engine ready to come out. So we'll pick back up tomorrow morning. All right guys, next morning, sorry about the noise, got the heat running, but show you where I'm at, uh, pretty much where I left off in the time lapse, except for I got the fuel lines unhooked. So, since we'll be digging into this uh, engine a little bit, basically kind of doing like a regasket, and we're doing like a cam swap, timing chain, gears, you know, uh, springs, retainers, keepers, all that fancy stuff. Before we yank this thing, which I'm getting really close because I'm basically ready to go up in the air, get the transmission out of it, and basically get the engine out. Uh, before I do any of that, we're gonna toss the battery back in it and do a compression check. You know, we don't wanna do all this stuff to the engine and have a, you know, a, a weak cylinder. So uh, we'll uh, get the battery hooked up with this thing get it set back in there, and uh, Jason's meeting with a client, and after that's done, we will go through and do a compression check. So we'll uh, pick back up when we're doing that. All right, so went ahead and got number one, all ready to go. And plug itself looks pretty good if we can get it to focus here. So, looks pretty decent. So, while we're waiting on Jason to come over, that way I can run the starter and he can check the test or vice versa, whichever. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing up in the air and start getting some things disconnected underneath. That way, uh, I'm a little bit further ahead uh, when we go to get stuff out of here. So, let's get this thing up in the air. Uh, might get some of the exhaust popped off, uh, some of the clutch linkage, whatever whatever we can get to, so let's go.
All right, as you just saw there, we went through, did a compression check, and everything was right about, well, once it actually got spinning, warmed up a little bit from just from the friction alone, everything was about 175 to 180. So it's pretty, pretty healthy. So that's a really good sign. So that way when we pull this thing, we are gonna re-gasket it, which it needs it, because <clears throat> it's, it's leaking in a few different areas. So we definitely be, we already have it out and doing a cam swap and stuff anyway. So definitely money ahead and just the pure fact of just regasking everything and doing it right. Uh, it's just, it's a better feeling. So, well, I guess we're gonna kind of clean up this stuff real quick. We're gonna get this sucker in the air, get the transmission out of it and get this engine ready to pull. So let's do it. All right, we got the shifter out, got everything laying over there. Makes life way easier taking the transmission out than you're not relying or forgetting to hit, bring that shifter down, trying to come through the floor and hitting everything. So we got that out of the way. So now we're ready to get this car up in the air. I'll get the trans out, show you guys what I'm doing there, I think. So I think I'm gonna leave the bell housing uh, attached to the engine and I'll pull just the transmission out and since I have so much room up front here, we'll uh, basically pull the engine out with the bell housing on it and we'll bring it down. Then I'll take the bell housing and clutch and stuff off separately. And then I'll probably remove this little guy here so I don't hit it coming out with the engine when I do that. So let's go ahead and get this thing up in the air, get the trans out of it. And uh, I guess really be on the home stretch getting this engine out. So let's do it. I think I mentioned what happens in the clip after this, but figured I'd just step in and say that uh, if you're ever working on one of these and uh, you got a Dakota Digital gauges and they have a speed sensor unit, unless someone wired in some quick disconnects, remember to take that sensor out of the body of the trans, make your life a lot easier, not stand around holding it like an idiot. Okay, as you saw, I was on the struggle bus there. I had, uh, I've not dealt with too many of these Dakota Digitals. And I thought there was a connector in here because I know you can take the body and thread it out, obviously, but I thought this was a connector. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and grab the transmission and unplug this thing, be good to go. Well, yeah, that's not a connector. So I stood there for a second and got some help. We clipped them and just, you know, to take that body out every single time, which is annoying, not that you're going to be servicing this a lot but we're gonna add some nice weather pack, quick disconnects that way in the future, whatever it is we're doing, we can literally just unplug those because we are gonna be the people that service this car in the future. So yeah, we're gonna make that a lot easier, but that's why you saw me be an idiot pulling that thing out. So, and sitting there holding it in my hands like it was a newborn baby, because I didn't want to drop it. So anyway, we're gonna move this stuff, bag and tag some bolts, uh, lower the car back down and uh, get this engine ready. We got it out finally. Uh, I'm sure in the time lapse you could tell the struggle. Uh, I pulled a few engines in my time and I knew something was wrong. I now heard, you know, engine mounts kind of sometimes will get, you know, jammed up a little bit. Well, something just was not right. Well, we finally got a light down behind on the back side of the engine mount and someone welded the engine mounts together. So I literally had to split a weld to get this thing out. Don't know why they did it, but I would love to know who it who it was so I could punch them right square in the face. But anyway, we got it out. So now I can get the bell housing off and the clutch out. And it's got a, looks like a Tri-5 uh, cast iron bell housing, believe it or not, which is kind of weird. But anyway, yeah, we're gonna get this stuff uh, popped off 
and should be in pretty good shape to get it up on the engine stand. Okay, as you guys just saw, got the engine up on the stand. And of course, as I sat the thing down to get the bell housing and clutch off, and just as I let it touch the wood to rest, all the coolant decided to dump out of the block and the rest, you know, the rest of it. So made myself a nice mess. <clears throat> so got to get that cleaned up. Uh, got to get all the tools cleaned up because everything's kind of thrown everywhere because that engine mount being welded on kind of threw me off. So I had to you know, we're rushing to move a bunch of stuff out of our way and all that kind of crap. So I want to get myself cleaned up and organized and I'm not sure what I'm going to start on next, but that's going to do it for this video. This will be part one of this Camaro series. And I don't know if I'm going to start on the engine doing like the cam swap and cleaning it up to paint and all that, or if I'm going to start on the Willwood brake system and like I think it's got tubular A-arms and stuff. I'm not sure. We have the parts, but have not gone through the boxes yet. So you can look forward to that in the next video. This should be a pretty neat series. Uh, so just stay tuned and I'm going to keep, hopefully keep pumping out more than a video a week. Just depends on how the progress goes. So we will see, but I got a lot of stuff to get cleaned up, like the transmission, get this stuff all organized and got to get some bolts bagged and tagged from the clutch. You know, because I'm not sure. That clutch is in decent shape, so I'm not sure if we're going to reuse it or what we're doing. But I got to spend the morning getting cleaned up and organized. And then we'll be starting on what's to come next. So, that being said, we're going to leave you off here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video of getting this thing kind of torn apart and getting the engine out to get prepped for all the cool stuff we're doing. So, yeah. Uh, We'll see you guys in the next video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you then.